Greetings, travelers, and welcome to Monster Monday. Um, I am back, friends, and this is going to be a special Monster Monday because this Monday happens to be Halloween. <laughs> I tried to find something that would be spooktacular for this Halloween Monster Monday, but it's difficult because I've done so many Monster Mondays, and um, I've done the undead, I've done a lot of the... I guess what you would typically think of as, as spooky monsters. So it took a minute for me to find something that I hadn't done already and that I would totally love to use. And I think I've found just the right creature. And that creature is the measle. So friends, the Measle is this neat little creature that you'll find in your copy of Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, a book which I don't use a lot. Now the reason why I usually don't dig deep into Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes is because it tends to lean into the higher challenge rating, higher level uh, monsters. And, and most of the campaigns I run tend to be like low to mid level, but as always, you know, with Monster Monday, I like to think of the scalability of monsters. So the Measle, actually, is only a challenge rating one mob, which means you might think that it would only be really useful in a lower tier adventure. But I have come up with a billishly clever way to, to modify and scale this creature, so you could use it, and I'll get into that in a moment. But first, Let's get to know the Measle a little bit more. Let's talk about the lore. In places where the Shadowfell washes against the shores of the material plane dwell Measles, hateful hermits who left behind their old lives to contemplate their misery in shadow. Now evil burns in their hearts, and they resent any intrusion into their suffering. Measles are all that remain of people who fled into the Shadowfell to escape their mortal existence. There are the darkness transformed them, and their bitterness made them twisted and cruel. Now they loiter near Shadowfell crossings to waylay travelers who venture too close to their lairs. The stain of darkness responsible for the existence of measles imparts to them magical powers that allow them to move through shadows with ease. Merely stepping into one pool of darkness allows a measle to move to another. They use this talent to ambush creatures, snatching them around the throat with their strangling cords and then stepping away. Measles also use this ability to ferry their victims to isolated spots and then leave the hapless souls to the designs of whatever horrors lurk there. Creatures that are drawn through the shadows by measles are cursed by the measles' baleful magic. The curse acts as a beacon. Sorrow-sworn, undead, and other terrors sense where they are located, and descend on the stranded victims to tear them apart. That's pretty deep. Now, if I just read that to you and I didn't tell you what challenge rating this creature was, I, my gut would be that you'd think this is like a mid to maybe high level creature, right? T the ability to teleport between dark spots, like just just the maliciousness, uh, the the you know the strategic kind of moves that it makes like but it's only challenge rating one so in this stat box it, it's a uh, medium humanoid um, armor class 13 which is why it's challenge rating one you know if you if you wanted to scale this up for a mid-level or high level adventure just bump up that armor class right away well how bill how would that work um, here's how I came up with it if these are creatures from the shadow fell and they're just like emanating magic, why couldn't they have some kind of shadow armor? Like armor of Agathy's kind of thing, um, but you know, make it like, give them like AC 16 or AC 18, you know? Hit points are 10d8 minus 10. I don't, I have to think about this for a second. 10d8 minus 10. Ooh. Who came, was this like a joke? Was this a prank when they wrote this book? I don't think I've ever seen 
hit dice on a monster where it was something D something minus. Usually it's plus, right? Usually it's like, you know, 46 plus 12 or whatever. But minus 10 is so weird. And I think maybe that was a design effort to make these a little lower in scale. You could set hit points at whatever you need based on the level of your adventuring group, right? That's how you can scale this monster, just like the armor class. Uh, movement speed's 30, that's fine. Strength is eight, uh, dexterity 17, which makes sense because they have to be stealthy, and constitution's nine, intelligence 14, wisdom 13, charisma 10. Um, again, you could scale those things too if you wanted to make a tougher or a weaker version of this, you could scale those. Um, they have dark vision for 120 feet. They speak common, and they're listed as challenge rating one, which is mind boggling. Because even if I didn't scale this thing, I think if I use this against a low-level party, I would wipe them out, like easily. So the first thing they, they have is shadow stealth. While in dim light or darkness, notice the use of dim light. The measle can take the hide action as a bonus action. So imagine that it's constantly able, <laughs> basically to, to move, attack, hide in one round, like it could do all of those things. That's, that's mind boggling. All right, now it's actions. So the, the attack action, they mentioned the strangling cord. Um, that's a, a garot, garot, a garot. I feel like that's a French word and I should know how to pronounce it. Garot, I don't know. Anyway, a garret, a garot. Um, it's a strangling cord. They get a plus five to hit, reach of five feet, one target of the measles size or smaller. Hit uh, is 1d6 plus three bludgeoning damage and the target is grappled. Uh, escape DC of 13 with disadvantage. Oh, oh, that's interesting. So if they hit, the target has to make an escape DC 13, but with disadvantage. That's, that's really, again, that's crazy powerful now that I think about it. So they can sneak up to you, they can attack you, wrap their strangling cord around you, you have disadvantage to break out of that. And they do some damage. Until the grapple ends, the target takes 2d6 plus three bludgeoning damage at the start of each of the measles turns. The measle can't make weapon attacks while grappling a, grappling a creature. Yes, but it can do other things like bonus action hide. That's crazy. Um, it lists a short sword. I guess that's just its backup weapon. Oh, no. Oh, I see. It, it lists the short sword, um, and I'm assuming it is a backup weapon, but it says for damage, it's 1d6 plus three piercing plus 1d6 necrotic damage. My assumption is that because this is a shadow fell creature, that's why it's adding necrotic damage to its attacks but then why wouldn't it add necrotic damage to the, to the garot? Hmm, I don't know about that. Well, the good thing is, is that we can be creative and we can change things as we need to. So just like I engineered some awesome shadow armor, if you wanna upscale this guy, you can engineer um, shadow tendrils. Oh, wait a minute, here we go, you guys ready? Instead of the garrote, where it has to sneak up and strangle someone, what if its armor could shoot out shadow tendrils that could do the same thing as the garrote, but it has 15 feet of reach? So it can swipe out with a shadow tendril, strangle, wrap it around someone's neck, DC 13 with disadvantage to escape, and then pull it back into a shadow, where it can then shadow teleport. Now, this is the part where it makes me think like, somebody was high when they were designing this creature. Like, how could this be challenge rating one? Allow me to explain. Shadow teleport recharge of a five or six. So if you're not familiar with recharge mechanics, basically like when you have a special power on a monster, you roll a d6 every round. If you roll whatever that range is, a five or a six in this case, so you have a one in three chance that they can recharge and do a shadow teleport. Um, the measle, any equipment it's wearing or carrying 
and any creature it is grappling can teleport to an unoccupied space within 500 feet of it. Provided that the starting space and the destination are in dim light or darkness. The destination must be a place the measle has seen before, but it need not be within line of sight. I want you to think about this for a second. 500 feet. That is one and a half football fields away. So the party could be doing whatever they're doing. The measle can jump out, snag someone, boop, teleport. Divide and conquer, right? This is a divide and conquer kind of monsters. Like, and I've, I've done some of those before, but I think this might be the most powerful divide and conquer monster that I can think of who is listed in the book at challenge rating one. That's crazy. Do you, do you see where I'm getting with this? Like the whole, the confusion as to how this could possibly be challenge rating one? Because even if I played this by the book and I didn't, I didn't scale anything, this one dude could wipe out a party of third level adventurers Easily. Easily. Divide and conquer. Who's to say that the hiding spot isn't inside of a mountain, right? 500 feet away. Um, and that there's a, a cliff ledge that drops off to a thousand foot drop off down a chasm inside of the mountain. So what would prevent the measle from floop, right? Grappled, teleport, drop. Or maybe it's not a chasm. Maybe it teleports to a cave where there's big, gnarly creatures, and it's basically feeding those creatures. Wow, wow, wow. If the destination space is occupied, the teleportation leads to the nearest unoccupied space. Any other creature the measle teleports becomes cursed by shadow for one hour. Until this curse ends, every undead and every creature native to the Shadowfell within 300 feet of the cursed creature can sense it, which prevents that creature from hiding from them. So if you're not familiar with Monster Monday, the way that I usually do these uh, segments is that I, I talk about the monster, I share some ideas and insights, um, I talk about how you could scale them, and then this is where I, I like to differentiate myself. I share my ideas for how you could use these monsters in an encounter, like a single one-off, for an adventure, or even potentially for a whole campaign. So here we go. You ready? Encounter. First off, do not be um, disappointed by the reference to the Shadowfell. If you like using the Shadowfell or the Feywild or any of that stuff, great. These are made for it. But if you don't use that stuff in your campaign, just adapt the concept to something that fits your campaign. Let's say you are just running your game in a standard fantasy environment, whether that's a homebrew, Greyhawk, the Forgotten Realms, whatever it is, right? Your adventurers are going along. They're, they're just you know, meandering on their way to some adventure, right? But instead of the roll of dice, let's have a random encounter you specifically set up the measle encounter, right? Now, this could be in broad daylight, which the party would never expect. But even in daylight, there is shadow, right? If you have a hard sun overhead, you have hard shadows on the ground and in different pockets. So maybe the measle has like a lookout position and they wait for travelers to kind of come by. They ambush the travelers, right? The first attack, let's say it, it goes without you know, any, any um, failure. The measle nabs somebody, gets them in their, their grasp, teleports them inside of this cave where it's dark, drops them off. And inside of that cave, because this is low level, let's say, you have a bunch of zombies, skeletons and zombies, right? So now that one party member is like, oh crap, the measle teleports back. While the rest of the party is trying to figure out what's going on, you do not tell the person who got dropped off in the zombie cave what they actually see because they wouldn't initially see anything. Round two, the party's still trying to figure out what happens, measle attacks. Now let's say this thing goes sideways, the measles attack fails, 
and and now they see this weird twisted little hermit you know creature and they're going to go attack the measle doesn't have to stay and fight them it could just teleport away again so teleport away before it gets hit but now the party might be in a situation where they are trying to figure out where their friend is you could explain to them that there are hills nearby and that some of these hills may be barrows, you know, like burial mounds. Um, but they're, they're going to have to figure out which hill their friend is inside, which mound is their friend inside. Um, and, and, and again, you could adapt this to ruins. You could adapt it to sewers. If you wanted to do more of an urban environment, maybe this measle, you know, maybe there's a, a weird parting of the mystical veil and this measle has found a spot where it can ambush people near an urban environment. So imagine, if you will, this low-level party trying to figure out what's happening as each of their members are oddly teleported away. And then, here's the other caveat. If you really wanted to go hardcore, you could have multiple places. There could be, you know, let's go with like the burial mounds thing or the hills, mountains, whatever forest the the measle could drop people in different locations not even to come back later and deal with them but just to maliciously leave them in different locations that are riddled with different undead and this is where the scalability even at the encounter level is feasible um, you could do this to a low level party and then have them dealing with a few skeletons and a few zombies that's pretty manageable Say you wanted to go to the mid-level with this encounter, you could easily just upscale the undead. And if you aren't familiar with the quantity and options of undead, allow me to suggest that you check out my playlist called The Undead. Um, I mean, you, you could do this with mid-level. You could even do this with high-level. I'm going to throw this one at you, okay? Say that for this encounter, your high-level, very confident group is moving through some area and you, you want to throw a monkey in their, their um, salad. So you have not one measle, you have four, maybe five. Maybe you have a measle for every member in the party. And you upscale those measles so they have shadow armor. You upscale those measles so they have tendrils instead of a garrot, a shadow tendril that can grapple someone. And you make the DC 18 instead of 13. And then you divide and conquer, you separate the party, you have all these measles teleport your party 500 feet away from each other, and then swarm them with undead, higher level undead. That could make for a very fun encounter. So, encounters are not too hard to manage with most monsters. How do we make this an actual adventure? What makes an adventure? I think the difference between an encounter and an adventure with most um, concepts is the advent of, of a story, right? There needs to be some narrative, a plot. So that could go back to the origin story of a particular measle. Who was that measle before they became a measle? Who was that you know, hermit? And why did they turn to the shadows? Why are they so riddled with, with maybe grief or guilt? What did they do? Um, to make that adventure, you have to just fill in the blanks, right? So here, here's an example. Suppose that you had a very wealthy noble lord who had you know, a wife and a family, and, and, but was drawn, had always been drawn to darker, more occult and esoteric and arcane subject matter, and began to study those things. And as a wizard developed certain you know, interests in, in certain kinds of magic, maybe necromancy, for example, um, maybe, you know, maybe this is a wizard who wasn't even remotely powerful enough to attain immortality through, say, becoming a lich. But the more they, the deeper they went into this darkness and, and learned, the more they came, became consumed by it. And maybe by accident, one of their eldritch, you know, rituals went awry and they drained the life force from their own family. Think of the guilt and grief that you would be riddled with. And this ultimately is what drove that noble person, that, that wizard, to, to fall into shadow and ultimately become a measle. 
in a way, I would propose that the character Schmeagel, who became Gollum, um, isn't that far off from a Measle. Maybe Measles were inspired by the Gollum character. When you think about it, kind of makes sense, right? Gollum's like a sneaky little strangler. Gollum one-on-one -on -one in combat wouldn't last very long, but if Gollum's got the opportunity to disappear and reappear, AKA the ring, um, Gollum can do a lot, right? So maybe in that sense, you know, if you have a, a Measle character and you, you develop that backstory, that could turn into an adventure. Perhaps the party doesn't know, for example, that the noble person is a measle. Perhaps the party is in search of that noble person because they learned in some previous adventure or in some downtime between adventures that you set up that this noble person had, a, had an incredible spell book. And not just a spell book, but also like a huge arcane library that they had, you know, of, of just esoteric uh, and occult knowledge. And maybe that, you know, maybe that's the motivation for your party to go looking. But they find out, you know, they find, maybe they find the nobleman's home in ruins and all of those things are gone. All the books and the spell books and everything are gone. And then they find out through some other hints, maybe they find some scraps and, and some maps and stuff. They figure out where the noble person went and they start to fill in those blanks and that's what drives them to go on this adventure to go find the nobleman. Or if your party is not motivated or they're not interested in the narrative, you could have a relative of that noble person hire them, right? So you have another noble from, you know, an adjacent region who, you know, has not had correspondence with his cousin in, you know, in a year and is very worried and hires the party to go to the noble's home and investigate. Now, this can be an adventure into and of itself because you can create that home, this ruined manor. It could be like a haunted house, right? Um, the spirits of the family are there, et cetera, et cetera, but not the nobleman, right? So, but then you, you have some clues in the haunted house along with some treasure that you know, yields that the, the nobleman left to go to this blighted place and you know, wallow in his misery or whatever. So the whole time they're thinking that this nobleman maybe is still alive, or maybe they're positing that the nobleman's like a lich or whatever. But instead you just make the nobleman into an upscaled measle. Um, and that measle now is so consumed by the shadow and the darkness that he's using, um, you know, people, wanderers, people who come into his kind of like lair area um, to feed the undead that he's created. So maybe he wasn't totally unsuccessful, but in becoming kind of a necromancer, he, you know, he built up the undead around him in this area, and now he uses the living um, as victims to feed them. Or maybe he has some ongoing ritual that he does, um, and he needs you know, human sacrifice to power that ritual. See, we just turned this simple thing into a whole adventure. Actually, multiple adventures, because here's a twist. What if the nobleman's cousin, who hired the party originally, was not innocent? What if he, in fact, is in on this and it's a scam? What if that nobleman pays the adventurers and basically hires adventuring groups like every month and sends them on this you know, wild goose chase that he knows will lead them to his cousin, who is now this horrible hermit measle, um, to continue feeding the ritual? And then you could develop that story, too, like a a whole twist. That's actually pretty dope. So you can go from an encounter to an adventure to a series of adventures, which ultimately can be a big part of a campaign. And could you make an entire campaign based on that storyline? Absolutely, because then you could find out, well, who, who first led this nobleman who became a measle into that shadowy darkness? Maybe you have a, a higher level big bad end guy you know, whether that's a, a, a vampire or another necromancer or a lich or whatever. So it could scale and you, you, could, you could draw this out pretty easily into a whole series of adventures and, and build a campaign around it. Now that I think about it, it's kind of like Curse of Strahd and Barovia-ish. So if that's your jam, 
this would also fit in really well, really easily there too. So um, could it even fit into like a descent into a Vernus kind of thing? Sure. Obviously it's written to fit in with the Shadowfell, so if you like those adventures. But again, don't feel compelled to connect it to the lore that you know D&D provides. You can change it around and make it fit your world. I hope this little exploration into the spooky measle has been informative and maybe even entertaining for you. Um, and if by chance you feel nice enough to support the channel, make sure that you subscribe, give this video a like, and spread the word about Monster Monday and the other content on the channel because we appreciate your support. Until next time, happy gaming. Hello and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy the Wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.